Hello and welcome to the a measurement video on the volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder equals the area of a circle, which is the end shape on a cylinder, times by the height. We have to be careful of the definition of uh, area of a circle here because a cylinder is a bit like a prism. Not exactly, but it's a bit like a prism in the way we calculate it. For a cylinder, the circle is like the cross-sectional area and a cross-sectional shape is uh, one that repeats all the way to the other end of the solid. I'll show you what I mean. And the height of the cylinder, it depends on whether the cylinder is sort of standing up or lying down, but the height is the distance between the two end circles of the cylinder. So we'll have to be careful of our de definitions here. Often if the uh, cylinder is lying down, um, it's not going to be a vertical height, but how far back that circle goes to get to the other end circle. So the area of a circle here, I'll show you, the area of the circle is a cross-sectional area because that circle could really be thought of as slipping down the shape, as we can see there, till it gets to the other end. So that's, the, that's why we're working with the area of a circle as part of our volume of a cylinder calculation. Now the height, this is the distance between the ends of the circles. You've got a circle on the top and a circle on the bottom. So the height in this case is a vertical one. But often if the uh, cylinder is laying down on that curved surface around the edge, then it's, uh, we, it's best for us to think about the height as being the distance between the two circles. Okay, the volume of the cylinder here, we have a radius and a height. Uh, volume is going to be uh, the area of the circle times the height. Now volume equals A times H, just like in a prism, but uh, because our area in this case is circular, our cross-sectional shape is circular, pi R squared is our area of a circle formula, and we'll times that by H. So overall we have volume equals pi R squared H for our formula for the volume of a cylinder. Let's have a look uh, at some real numbers. We have a radius of 6 metres and a height of 12 metres. So we'll fill in the, uh, the numbers for this particular cylinder just straight underneath our formula, which is always a good idea for our setting out. Pi times R squared, in this case, will be pi times 6 squared, because our radius is 6. And our height is 12 metres, pretty obvious. And when we calculate that out, we get 1357.2. And we're working in metres, but we want a volume. So we'll have to use cubic metres for our units. So that's uh, the formula up the top line, then all the numbers plugged in on the second line. And uh, careful with your calculations and your units. And that's the one decimal place. We rounded it off now. We have 10 centimetres on that uh, red dotted line. And you'll notice, uh, we have to be careful here, we want to use a radius for our volume formula. And we've been given a diameter. So I think you can go from diameter to radius by dividing by 2. So you know that radius is half a diameter. So let's get a radius calculated first before we start plugging in any numbers into our formula. So radius is 5 centimetres. We're going to be using R equaling 5 for our formula. So just check first whether you have a radius or not. You might have to divide a diameter by 2 to get there. So underneath there we have pi r squared. Instead of pi times r squared, we'll have pi times 5 squared. Remember, r was our radius of 5. Times about by our height. Now, this is a tricky one. Well, not all that tricky, but uh, notice our height is actually measured in a horizontal way. It's pretty unusual, but we have a circle on this uh, right-hand end. So the distance between the two circles is really the height for the purposes of the volume of a cylinder. So it's funny to do a height uh, measured across ways, but that is, uh, that, this cylinder is sort of sitting on its side here. We have to be a little careful. So the height is 6. And if we calculate that out, we get a number of 471.2. Now we want to use cubic units. We were using centimetres before, but we want centimetres cubed now because we're using volume. Use cubic units for volume. So that's uh, not all that much trickier, but we had to notice and recognise that we were, had a diameter given to us. We needed a radius for our uh, formula, so we uh, found a radius by cutting our diameter in half there. Alright, setting your work out carefully is uh, a big help. So that's the volume of a cylinder. 
And what did we do? We had an area of a circle times a height. We had to be careful. Uh, the area of the circle is known as the cross-sectional area in this case. And it's uh, so that's why we were keen to get the area of the circle happening. The height is the distance between the end circles. Sometimes it's vertical, but uh, sometimes it's uh, how far back uh, you have to go to get from one circle to another in a cylinder. Okay, volume equals a times h, and in this case the a represented a circle formula of pi r squared, so it'll be volume equals pi r squared h is the specific volume formula for a cylinder. And if the cylinder, we saw in that second example, if the cylinder has a diameter, we've got to divide by 2 first to get a radius to use in our formula. Alright, that's a good rundown of the volume of a cylinder. See you next time. Don't forget peterblakemaths.com if you want to check out lots more videos. See you next time. Bye.